The Helipod, brought to you by America's top-rated sportsbook app. That, of course, is DraftKings. You probably know them for their daily fantasy with football and basketball and baseball. But now you can actually bet on real live games. DraftKings Sportsbook giving all new players the chance to earn a sign-up bonus of up to $1,000 when signing up using, you guessed it, the promo code HELIPOD. We have... Teams trying to scrap for playoff spots in the NFL. We have college basketball going on right now. And to celebrate this weekend's UFC 256, DraftKings is giving all MMA fans who sign up right now the chance to triple their winnings when placing any bet on UFC 256. It's safe, it's reliable, and it's secure. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the promo code HELIPOD when you sign up to get up to one thousand dollars that's right helipod gets you a deposit bonus of up to one thousand dollars for a limited time only a drafting sportsbook must be 21 or older tennessee only bonus comprised of first deposit bonus deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough see draftkings.com slash sportsbook for details if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help call or text the tennessee red line 1-800-889-978 Nine. In addition to DraftKings Sportsbook, we are brought to you by Viore. As you know, they have been with us since the beginning. I love their gear. It's comfy, it's cool, and it is versatile. And right now, if you are like me, you're thinking about what to get your loved ones for Christmas. Viore. V-U-O-R-I clothing.com slash helipod is where you can go right now to get 20% off the finest athleisure wear on the planet. And I'm not just saying this. I believe it. I wear it all the time. MJD, he's going to be joining me in a minute on the Helipod with MJD, uh, lives in this stuff. It's nonstop. You can work out in it. You can wear it on the road. You can wear it to work. Uh, Viore, V-U-O-R-I, clothing.com slash Helipod, 20% off today. I promise you, you'll be thanking me. Changing it up a little bit this week with uh, our interview leading things off because it's so good. Cameron Jordan, Cam Jordan, the defensive end for the Saints, uh, one of the best players in the National Football League, on one of the best teams in the National Football League, coming off an NFC Defensive Player of the Month award in November will be our guest as we are, uh, we're talking a little bit about everything, MJD, life. with you got Cam Jordan. Yeah, life, football, everything. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready to go. All right. It's the Helipod with MJD and special guest Cam Jordan kicking things off, presented by Viore right now. All right. So as promised in the intro, five-time Pro Bowler. I was going to say top 100, but he's not even top 100. He's top 25. He's number 23 on the yeah. NFL's top 100 list. The all-decade team, Camp Jordan in the house. And we're leading off the pod with the guest this time. Is that all right with it's you? It's a beautiful thing. I yeah. mean, especially with this guy. See, what you don't know, Dan, is a long, 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 long time ago, we trained together oh, yeah? uh, at his alma mater, which was my my humble abode when I in the offseason in the Bay Area. We got a chance to get some work in. And it's funny because back then he was young and he was wet behind the ear. So he'd come in every other day. You know, he put the weights, he'd throw the weights around, but then he'd disappear for a little while. Then all of a sudden he starts getting these sacks and he starts stacking these sacks up. And now he's a vet. Talk about that experience just growing through, you know, obviously some young, younger things and then becoming that vet and, and leading this team to where you guys are now. Yeah, I mean, you know, every every year you have to get better. Every year you have to push yourself to new heights. Um, and it, it's funny, like, you know, that first couple years in the league, you're just like, oh man, you know, you're looking around, you're like, yo, he believes in the weight room. Everybody believes in the weight room. It's always bigger, faster, stronger. It's always like, you know, bench 430 pounds, squat, try and squat as much as you can, 550 on the back. And then once you get to like year four, year five, you're like, yo, all this weight on the back is only breaking down the back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You exactly. Have to, you have to get sort of, uh, uh, it, I would say intuitive to what your body needs and, you know, every person is different. So you just start to understand what it takes to, to not only maintain your body, but to push it to new heights and in different levels. It doesn't have to be Olympic lifting all the time. There's a, you know, you look at guys like, you know, the, the worst 
the worst trade in franchise history for the Vikings, Herschel Walker. Um, but, you know, what he did with the Cowboys, you look at something like that, you look at how he did it. He never was a, a weightlifting guy. He was more body weights. It was all calisthenics. It was just everything else. And you take a little bit from that. And then you, of course, have, you know, in the league, when I first came in, I had, you know, John Vilma, you know, Will Smith, uh, rest in peace. I had, you know, Malcolm Jenkins and Roman Harper, that guys were were proven in the league and had shown how to win. And it wasn't, it wasn't just about weight room. It was about, you know, watching the film. It was about, you know, stretching, making sure you're doing everything the right way. So when your time comes, you can take full advantage of your opportunity and that, that gear sort of shifted. And it was all about, you know, now how best can I go about taking care of me uh, and pushing myself to the best ability? And it's like, you go over to Cal and you see guys like MJD working out, with blast squares and they're out here getting busy and you're like, all right, but what about this conditioning though? For me, you know, it, when you're sitting at 290 pounds, almost 300 pounds as a rookie, you're like, yo, to be on this edge, I can't be this, this heavy. And the more I lift, the less neck I have. So, you know, <laughs> my genetics says I'm just predisposed to being big. So it's like, yo, this conditioning is, is where I'm going to make this, this stride at. And that's really where, you know, the stamina and the, uh, the mentality of never coming off the field sort of develops is, is the more I can run, the more I can stay on field, the better I can help my team. And that's where you sort of, you know, have that switch from I need to be the biggest, the strongest, the whatever it is to I need the best me I can be. The more you lift, the less neck you have. I mean, I'm, I'm, MJD's been lifting a lot. There's no neck there. There's I don't a lot even see of neck it. here. I don't see man. one inch of neck. There's a lot. It's just this Viore that I have on right okay. now. It's covering it. All right. All right. You know what I mean? <laughs> man, you, uh, so you're obviously doing everything right. I mean, you're creeping up on a, on a hundred sacks. Your, your career's been off the chain. You're in the season. You guys are the number one seed in the NFC right now. I'm curious when you get a couple of days off, right? When you get a chill and there's two Monday night games, you got three little kids at home. Do you watch football like last night's games? Did you, did you catch any of those? Or are you just hanging with the fam and getting away from it for a minute? Uh, no, we, we typically watch football. I would say last night it doesn't happen because you know, kids go down like eight o'clock, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was, I think I was mid prayer with the kids and then daddy woke up, <laughs> I woke up, you know, somewhere in my, in my son's room I was like, all right, well, I miss a lot of things, you know, then of course, you know, for guys who are married, no, you can't just go back to the bed at like 11 o'clock at night. Like, um, so you, so it took you that long, you know, there's questions. Yeah, you got to oh, yeah. Hey, honestly, I clearly fell asleep. My bad. We were supposed to watch that. We were supposed to watch it. It's Monday night is your, your night to watch the movie. That's on me. You get you get tomorrow night. <laughs> I forfeit my games. I, I've clearly lost that. You know, it, your night. But uh, I, you know, I woke up this morning, found out the Steelers lost, and was like, oh, like you know, I missed some things. But yeah, when it comes down to it, we normally watch football. We're a football family. You know, my my son is luckily the oldest of the three. You know, I got two girls, but I but the boy is the oldest, so it's not all Little Mermaid. And you know, it's it's hey, what's the oldest one to watch? Power Rangers. I can do this. Dad, I want to watch football. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm hiding behind the fact that he's the oldest because we're outnumbered. It's me and him. You got to get a dog then. You know, you got to get a a male dog, kind of just even even everything out. (laughs) From experience, get a dog. It it works out well. Um, Look, defense has been balling. And with Drew Brees going down, I felt like you guys had to pick it up. And then you do. You guys take your game to another level. What, what, how did you do that? One and then two for you personally. What did you do to kind of get this defense back on track? Um, yeah, I mean, you talk about the leadership that is a part of our defense. You know, from top on down. Uh, you know, Marcus Williams, Marshawn Lattimore are now in their what third and fourth years respectively, uh, fourth years. And then you talk about Malcolm Jenkins coming in, um, providing that stability, that 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 core veteran leadership. Um, and Janoris Jenkins, of course, have, has been awesome for us. Uh, bring that in with P-Rob coming back and that secondary set. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like Chauncey, you got the young buck, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson Jr., what a CD Ducey. He's got a lot of <laughs> names, but he balls just as hard as, as all of his names should indicate that he does. Uh, so, you know, he falls under that guideline. So it's, it's just that, that level of system where the whole secondary has an open line of communication and trust one another. And that, as you know, open, open line of communication is huge. Um, especially with all 3,000 fans that are allowed to come to the games now. I mean, it is it is pure. You have to be on the same page because offenses are able to do so many audibles. They're able to do so many things to switch it up because every game is an away game. But then you talk about the linebacker core who's, you know, led by Demario Davis, who is probably the best linebacker in the game right now. Um, and then, we pick, you know, 
got Quan Alexander late to be paired up with him. I mean, Quan Alexander has been amazing uh, since we've gotten him. Um, nothing short of amazing. And then, of course, you talk about the D line, and you know, guys get focused on you know maybe chipping or nudging or trying to double team me. Trey Henderson is out here winning at a high rate. I'm I'm over here trying to tell him like, hey, focus on him. Like, don't worry about <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> Go ahead, give him the nudges, but. Again, we I've said early on, if I'm getting double team, you win your one-on-ones. And he's win, been winning at such a high level. Him and David Onyemata have won at such a high level. It's like, yo, you double team them, that means I'm back to be singles. And I'll take these singles. Uh, and it's been it's been fun to play. And then of course last week you got Sheldon Rankins back healthy. So now we're looking like we're being going back to being healthy. You know, uh whatever happens to Janoris Jenkins coming back and P Rob coming back. We're only going to get healthier as, as we, we inch closer to the playoffs, and that's that's key. It's all about prime, being prime at the right time. You, you named everybody on the defense. I was going to ask you. You know, there's so, so many there's, there's so, so many named brands, brands, right? With mm-hmm. with you and and uh, Malcolm and and Jack Rabbit and uh, Marshawn. I, and it's funny because Demario Davis is an absolute monster. I, how how you make first team All Pro and you don't get voted into the Pro Bowl is still beyond me. That's a broken system that we need to fix at some point. Um, but I still feel like he doesn't get the national credit he deserves. David Yamada is playing great. Is Trey Hendrickson on social media? Is he invisible? Does he have a Twitter and Insta? I I believe he had a, a Twitter when he was in college. You know, I, I've said the same thing. I was like, bro, I was like, in this day and age, like, I know, get out I know there. you're not with it, but you sort of have to get with it. And he's like, bro, football, family. Like, he's like, you know, God, family, football. He's like, I don't really have time to I love it. You stay, you know, you stay focused on what you're doing. He's like, yo, when I came out, everybody, you know, I was a third rounder. I fell. Like, you know, he's got a chip on his shoulder from sure. that. Um, so I'm like, yo, we focus on football. When he takes care of himself. Double D, when he takes care of himself. I don't know how he's so underappreciated. It's probably because he got drafted by the Jets. He's going to hold that against him. And then he went to the Browns and back to the Jets. Like, it, he probably won all of 10 games in seven years. And then, you know, you come to the Saints and you're 10 and, 10 and 2 now. You know, he's, he's won more, more games in probably his four years being here than he's ever won his entire career elsewhere. That's it's not on you, you know? That's You know how tough. it is. You, it's, 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 it's the luck of the draw, some say. Right. And, you know, you guys have done well. Uh, you have to talk about the two games against the Bucks. I mean, you guys dominated them. And I'm not going to lie. I was one of the people that kind of bought into the Tom Brady, all those weapons, everything going on. Yet you guys got to You get after him. I mean, you find ways to get after him. What, what is that like? And what are those meetings like with Dennis Allen? Man, um, we talk about Tom Brady, and what he's been able to do over at Tampa is pretty great. I mean, uh, you have the, you know, uh, I'm going to keep saying one of the best quarterbacks ever, um, probably most winningest quarterback, you know, in terms of championship rings. Um, I call, you know, as a D line, I call him the antithesis of what I want to go against because he gets that ball out hot. He's not right. afraid to just go, you know, live for that next down. He, he's not going to pat that ball too often. You know, he is, he is definitely checked down King. Like you could beat your man clean and still not get the, get the sack that you worked so hard for multiple times. It's frustrating. But as a team, if we can go ahead and make them do these quick dink and dunks, you know, we, we saw success there. And so both both games, it was just like, look, we, we, whether we get the this amount of sacks we think we can, um, it's probably not going to happen. But as long as we're putting pressure on them, as long as we're frustrating them, it's going to bode well for our team. And we did just that. Marshawn Lattimore versus uh, Mike, Evans? Mike Evans. Talk about that matchup. I mean, because this is the thing. You know, I'm petty. And I know you're petty. Uh, we'll get to your pettiness in a little bit. But Marshall Lattimore comes right after the game. Like, look, look at the targets. Look at the catches. Like, I own him. Like, what kind of confidence and does that go throughout your defense when you guys get ready to play that matchup? Um, you know, as you know, on defense, uh, all you have is fear. Is you know, what we've been told. Now, in 2020, it's so hard. Because every penalty is against the defense. You can't, you know, there's no holding. There's no jamming at the line. There's, you know, it's very ticky tacky when the, when the, uh, the refs get in this thing. It's holding this, it's holding that. But you're like, oh, like at the end of the day, we have to be able to impose our will. If all we do is, is let them take shots, let them, you know, do what they want, it makes our day longer and it's, it's, it makes us irrelevant. To, for us to have the biggest force, we have to be able to come up with everything. So things may get handsy. Things may, you know, be tough. But – you got to earn every yard, and we make them do that. And we, we talk about Marshawn in Tampa Bay. Marshawn, you over there. Go get him. That's it. 
That makes it easy, man. Um, what was going through your head a couple of weeks ago when you guys were playing the Broncos and Kendall Hinton is starting at quarterback who you know hadn't played quarterback on the NFL level, really hadn't played on the NFL level. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, I'm, I'm sure you are well abreast of like how it went down. It's a pretty incredible story, you know, that he's essentially the fifth string guy. He's working in, you know, sports marketing a couple of weeks ago and gets called up off the practice squad and starting a quarterback. What, what was going through your head when you guys saw him out there actually on the field? Look, at the end of the day, we had, we, Honestly, you know, it's one of those things where you've been prepared all week for one quarterback and then you have to go deal with another. Um, probably the same thing is happening this week, you know, with the game we got coming up. Um, you rather deal with the devil you know than the devil you don't know, right? right. You prepare for a guy who you, you know is going to drop it eight or nine yards versus a guy you don't even have film on. Right. So it's not about, yeah, it's not about the offensive line. Now you're just like, what are what is the, the team going to do to try to handle the situation? I mean, it's huge. It's nothing but respect for uh, him to go out there and and try and play, though, you know, with the short notice that he had coming up from practice squad. He was a receiver. You know, the last time he probably took a quarterback snap was over at Wake Forest like two years ago. You know, yeah. wh- whatever the whole story that it was, um, you're like, yo, at the end of the day, this can't affect what our defense mentality is. And we've got to go in and try to affect this kid. Now it's not about getting him off the spot. Now it's like, figuring out where his spot's going to be if they allow him to pass it. Um, and and look, be looking towards, you know, the two running backs that they have in Phillip and Melvin Gordon and how we affect that. So we can shut down the game. We make it one-dimensional, and we try to do just that. I, from you, you brought up your team that you're playing this week, which is obviously the Eagles, and they're having their quarterback issues there with, uh, with Carton, Carson Wentz, who was benched for Jalen Hurts. I would imagine – that as a guy who is fond of getting to the quarterback and racking up those sacks, tackling Jalen Hurts is going to be a little more challenging if he's in there than than Carson Wentz. Is that more difficult for you as a pass rusher to deal with a with a guy like that? Obviously, yeah. I mean, I think you know from from the film that I watched on him yesterday, I think he he got comfortable in that pocket real quick. I mean, uh, he was able to to roll out, escape through the pocket. You know, he rushed for almost what fifty some yards. Um, that that's something that a defense is not going to be proud of. And that's something that you have to try to eliminate. Um, but this kid, again, there's not enough film. There's not a lot of film on him, And yet we got to go in there knowing we have to prepare for Carson or, or Jalen, just depending on how the, their franchise wants to handle the situation. As us as a defense, all we can do is focus on us. We can focus on how we're going to attack, how we're going to uh, play these blocks, how we're going to handle our technique and let the rest, you know, be sorted out by our hits. Will you will you go back and watch some of his tape at Oklahoma? Will you dig that deep, or will you just look at what happened last week? No, no, uh, no, nah, probably not. Come on, <laughs> Nobody, nobody's going to throw on some college film. What you did uh, in college got you to the league, but I okay. doubt I doubt your whole system is going to change just because you're you're at helm now for with the week in advance. Do you do you, do you ever send? Matt Ryan, like a Christmas card or a birthday card or a thank you card, just for the fact that you've you've, you've gotten them twenty one times in twenty games. Uh, you know what? I try to do my best to leave that man alone because he's a godsend. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate him. I've trolled a lot of people. I will. I probably will never troll Matt Ryan. I think he's a great guy, former league MVP. He can make all the throws. He does all the right decisions. He's probably you know a top five quarterback in our league. Um, and then, you know, uh, when we have to play them, I, I make sure to dust, dust them off after I pick them up. Hey, make sure you're good. <laughs> your ankle good. Your knee's good. I need you. Hey, you're good. Man. <laughs> Cause you don't move, right? Hey, listen, you keep patting that ball. I appreciate you. It is, it is kids it, appreciate you. It is pretty incredible. I, I didn't realize that until the last time you got him three times, you, you, you were unable to sack him in your most recent game, but. 21 sacks in 20 games is more than any single player has sacked a single quarterback in NFL history by a lot. Oh, listen, I was because I see I love that. Like, you don't want to talk bad about him, but we have to go back to a a couple of years ago when you and uh, Cam Newton got into it and you sent him, a you know, first of all, give us a plug. You still have the wine. Yeah, I mean, look, so it's not my wine. It was just a coincidence that it had my last name, and it's a phenomenal wine. Oh, Jordan, is it Jordan wine? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great wine. Absolutely. You know it's a Northern Cali wine. And yeah. You got you to show, show love to the Valley, you know what I'm talking about? So, 
uh, I sent him a nice little bottle of Jordan wine. I, somebody sent him a broom and he tried to attach it to my wine. I was like, I didn't go that far. You know, I, I went to, I went for, a, I want you to have a phenomenal date night on me. You know, <laughs> right. somebody who tried to ruin that date night. I can't attach that. Like it went from, you know, trolling to now he probably had to fight me. You, know? right. <laughs> like, you, yeah. you, you like to, you like to straddle the fence. Don't, don't pick one side. But that, yeah, that happened. And I'm sure he tried to, you know, he probably had some, some extra something for me the next year, but then he lost again. So that's, you know, it was good. It's been a good couple of years for us. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's been a good <laughs> couple of years for you. You know, who else has been good for that entire draft class. You look at that draft class you came out with in 2011 in terms of pass rushers. It's unbelievable. Vaughn Miller, JJ Watt, Robert Quinn, Ryan Kerrigan, uh, you, Cam Hayward, Justin Houston. I don't know that there's ever, ever, been a draft year in terms of pass rushers as dominant as this. Do you guys keep track of each other and talk to each other? And besides oh, yeah, hanging I mean, out Pro Bowls, there's definitely, there's definitely pride being from the uh, draft class of 2011. I mean, we're probably the greatest draft class to ever go down, but it is what it is. Um, you know, and that's just you know, pass rushers for sure was a hard year to get into because I mean, there was even you know, uh, Adrian Claiborne had like that, that six and a half sack night against the Cowboys. You know, it was you know, Cam Hayward is is one of the top, you know, D tackles in the league. Um, you even had Muhammad Wilkerson while he was healthy over at the Jets that, you know, it was going crazy. Um, yeah, there's been, there's, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of talent out there. I mean, you talk about Marcel Darius who had 10 sacks over at Buffalo. Um, of course, you know, JJ Watt has had a 20 sack season. Justin Houston, 20 sack season, Robert Quinn, 20 sack season. I'm, I'm not boasting that, you know, we're just the best just because of our pass rushers. Cause you can also add in, you know, Julio Jones and AJ Green, Pat <laughs> Peterson, <laughs> Richard Sherman, um, you know, just some would say some of the best in their position, but whatever. Um, <laughs> the fact that you can name all these people, it, 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 like that is like you can't name the people in your draft class, especially the running backs. Oh, but well, they all went ahead of me. It's a different thing. Like he's this is like a color. Like this is my, that mine is more of a hate thing. His is more of like a together thing. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, you know, draft class two thousand eleven. It's about it's about togetherness. Give me a good Greg Williams story. I mean, I, I covered him when he was in Washington. He obviously calls the zero blitz, gets fired with the Jets. He was your DC. Your rookie year in New Orleans, just one year, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know. Well, Do I have a good years. Greg Williams story? I had one sack my rookie year because I was told rookies weren't allowed to be on third down. But since my rookie year, we've had nothing but rookies being on third down. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So 90, 92 sacks later, whatever it is, you know, I'm glad he went over there. He's a great, great D coordinator. I mean, the probably the best, the best story ever was probably playing, you know, before we played Maurice Jones Drew my rookie year. Uh, we got the whole the whole show of what Mar Maurice Jones Drew was. You know, he's he's he he may not be taller than than a kickstand, but he you know he feels he feels people so before funny. they hit him. He you know what I'm saying he he sees the hole before it opens up. He's like he will make you have nightmares about the way he runs. And don't be you know he's he's he may be short, but he's powerful. So he'll run through you. He'll run around you. And then you know we get to the game, and it's, luckily it's the Jacksonville offensive line, so we scrapped them. But <laughs> I love that you're the guest on the show, man. I appreciate yeah. you. <laughs> hey, but like we were, we were, we were hitting him when he didn't have the ball. You know, it was just no it was one of those games. Like, yo, if he goes out for a route, and even if he does, like if he puts his hands up, hit him. And so, you know, we 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 did what had to be done. Well, you you, you listen, MJ. Here's the thing about. <clears throat> about Cam, he's no stranger to podcasts. I mean, mm. he has his own podcast with Mark Ingram. It's, it's a Players Tribune podcast, correct? Big, Big trust. trust levels, yeah. yeah, yeah, trust levels. He, I mean, listen, their guest list is no question. It's unbelievable. It's great. I mean, you got Mike Evans, you Todd Gurley, Lamar, uh, Derek Henry, Kittle's been on there. What did you, do you learn stuff about these guys that you didn't know before you had them on? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. I mean, you, you don't go through, you don't go to the podcast scripted. I mean, we may have like three or four questions that we, we want to ask them, but it, it's all just, you know, off the cuff, all candid, just kicking it with the guys that you sort of either seen around the Pro Bowls or been, you know, you, you have interventions with, uh, or intervene with each other during, or during off season. Like, you know, right. you may be somewhere running to them and have these conversations like, you know what, like we gotta, we gotta double up. I, I, I love the vibe. So we should at least create some content. Do you uh, speaking of the Pro Bowls? Dan doesn't know this. Have you have you done the room trick yet? Have you done the room trick at the Pro Bowl to the new, to the new guy? 
You know what the room trick is? Where you get someone's room number and you charge all your your drinks and food to their room? Oh, no, see, uh, no, not at all. If if anything, it's like, you know, I already got all the family. I'm so worried about, like, slowing our costs down. (laughs) (laughs) That that, would have been brilliant. Like, hey, yo. You know, listen, hey, that's what I'm hey, trying to number? tell Let you. Let me slap this. <laughs> you know, Peyton Manning this. did that my my first year. We we're in Miami and he got someone's room number. It might have been Ray Rice's or someone at the time. I forget. But literally, I think his tab ended up coming like 50 grand because everyone at the bar, they were ordering my oh. ties and all these things. And it's like, hey, man. But then, you know, and, and you have to explain this to our, our, our fans as well. What is it like in the second half of the Pro Bowl? It becomes a real game, doesn't it? So I was like, somebody, somebody always goes out of their way to make that first real hit. And then everything, like all this rah, rah, we're at the Pro Bowl turns into, I'm trying to win this 80 something grand, 90 right. something grand, you know, cause the winner gets double what the loser gets and then becomes a real life thing. Like the first, first quarter, you're good. Like everybody's warming up second quarter. Hey man, like be easy. Third quarter, somebody's going to let one go. And then it's, it's, no friendships here. Like I got nothing for you but to win. I mean, I, I love hearing, I love hearing the guys who have made as much money as you guys have still in the second half of a, the last game of the year that really doesn't matter because you're going to get double the money. Start it's playing a pride hard. thing too. Absolutely. Like, you got to remember, you 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 bring your whole family there and they're they not paying for anything. So you're you starting to add up like, ooh, you got to cover that tab and that tab. Like, OK, this this 45 may I may not have the, anything extra left over. So let, let me go, go ahead and get this 90 <laughs> so we can be good. You, you lose you lose a Pro Bowl. You're probably in the hole. <laughs> no question. You, you never no. want to be in the hole because mom that came, dad and came. Wife, kids, her parents. You probably didn't have to bring a nanny for the date night. Something. Just know it gets expensive. And then nobody, you know, nobody but you is putting all the tabs the whole week you're there. What and, what, what is your dad going to say when you catch him in terms of number of Pro Bowls? He has six, you have five right now. Right? I mean, at this point, you know, we, we do this as a collective. If you if you learn anything, I'm all about I'm all about being prideful within the team aspect. Team. Team is huge. And, you know, I've always said the Jordan men, you know, from, from the moment I got one, I was like, the more, Jordan men have, you know, seven Pro Bowls. My dad has six of them. And now it's, you know, the Jordan men have 11 Pro Bowls. My dad still has six of them. And when I, you know, when I finally break, you know, if I, if I can get to six and, and I'll probably just be like, look, Jordan men, we've got 12. We 50, 50 down the line. We did it. And hopefully I pass them up. I'm like, Jordan men got 13. We, we in a good place. I just, Hey, I would just leave it there. I've right. been blessed. This is my last question. Everyone has that time when they're – it's always – it always like fathom, like my mind runs when I think of guys whose dad played in the league. And, you know, when you're in high school and you have that – you start lifting weights and you feel like you're a man, right? And you 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 have that conversation like you try your dad. What was that like for you? What, what Give us that story. I don't know if I ever necessarily tried him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Pops is still a half inch taller than me. Like, I'm 6'4 and change. He's 6'5". Um you know, it's, it's always been a pride factor. Like, you know, my dad played in the league, but he's also an engineer. Um, but we've always wrestled in the house, you know, like we're a uh, very physical family. So I've got an older brother, I've got a younger sister, but we've always wrestled in the house, you know, from the moment we were probably conceived till the moment, you know, we started tossing pops around a little too, too heavy. <laughs> and then, then we stopped wrestling. But um, somewhere in high school, you know, we were from pops pinning us down to, all right, pop, I'm done with this. And you, then you toss him and realize he's only 225 pounds, you know? Then you start making fun of his weight. It, it just, it, it shifts. <laughs> it's a very barbaric, like I said, like most most families grew up like, oh, my, you know, my dad was great. We played a little bit. Like, no, like when you're coming from a football family, especially, you know, a bigger body football family, like we we wrestle, we play around. Like if we're, if we're not a family of tight ends or a family of quarterbacks or a family, whatever. His two sons were a D tackle and a defensive end. You know, my brother is probably 6'3 and got 50 pounds on. So just, wow. you know, in high school, I was sitting, you know, before I left high school, I was 6'4, 265, 270. So just know somewhere in high school, we like I said, we're, we're tussling and it looks like we're playing, but it's, it looks like grown men going at it. Man, I feel bad for the furniture in that house, Cam. You're right. So, so it gets, it gets hefty. So somewhere in high school, you know, we started throwing him around a little bit. And he, he didn't like it anymore. So we stopped wrestling somewhere on there. So there was, there was no need to try. Okay. You know, I think, um, and then 
And then somewhere probably like junior, sophomore, junior year, I probably beat him in a 40. And I was like, I was like, this is great. I was like, I'm better. I'm, I'm officially, you know, Steve Jordan 1.0. Hi, I'm Cam Jordan, your legacy. Steve Jordan 2.0. Like you made me to be better than you. I've officially been there. So now, <laughs> I'm just gonna, now I got to get, you know, the NFL accolades that you have. And I'll work that out myself. Were you, were you ever thinking about going to an Ivy League school because your dad did? And did he ever push you in that direction? Uh, when you say the Ivy League, you talking about those thirteen schools, or you know the thirteen colonies created the oldest. You know, oh, schools I think over I think I know where he's Coast. going here. Yeah, hey, I yeah don't the East do Coast the East Ivy. Coast. Yeah, I don't. I don't do coal. I don't. <laughs> uh, I was born in Minnesota. Left when I was five. Went to Arizona. Been been in Arizona since I was five. Went to school in California. Now I'm in New Orleans. Nothing in my blood has ever told me it should be colder than seventy degrees. <laughs> don't, don't don't do it. At, at least never, we, at least we know, which I don't think he will any time in the near future. When he becomes a free agent, uh, Cam Jordan will not be going to play for a cold weather team. Mm, listen, don't don't ever say that. We, <laughs> we just never know. Leave all your options open. Yeah, I will never you know. say never, but I will say I will say currently won't do it. Right. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I like won't that. Won't say never. Won't. Don't you do this to me? <laughs> I have I have two that I want to leave you with here, Cam. I really appreciate the time. One is. When did you know that Taysom Hill was was a little different? I, I remember back to his rookie year. I was doing one of your games. It was the it was the game you guys played the Lions when you combined for like ninety points. And we were talking to Sean Payton in the production meeting. And I swear to God, he must have spent fifteen minutes talking about this rookie Taysom Hill, who was at that time I think a twenty seven year old you know rookie out of BYU. When did you know that he might be a little something? Um, I mean. When you say something, are we talking about something like the tight end or something like the receiver? No, like I, or, I know he was different because you knew he was kind of that uh, that Swiss Army knife, right? Because you guys were using him on special teams early. When did you know that he might have the chance to be, you know, a, a legit quarterback in this league at some point? Okay, so we're talking about pure quarterback. I'll say, yeah, we knew he was going to be special the moment Sean got him because you, you, if you've talked to Sean, like you were just saying about the production meeting, he was gushing about him. I, I've yeah. never seen, you know, a, a harder man crush about a kid that we it's traded pretty for. pretty unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, he's like, this is fastest quarterback, RG3. Well, you know, rattled off quarter, fastest quarterback in 20 years. This kid, he can do it all. And I was like, all right, Sean. Like, I, like all right, coach. Like, we, I'm in the middle of practice. I got to get back to practice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, faster than RG3, faster than, you know, faster than them all. Lamar Jackson, doesn't matter who. Take him <laughs> faster. And I was like, all right, coach. But then he started making these big plays on special teams, started making big plays on, you know, being a tight end, slot, wherever you fullback, running back. He started putting all these plays and then became, you know, the Swiss Army knife. Um, but, of course, he's still under tutelage in the quarterback room of SP and Drew. Um, so you, he's getting the best from, from the best. You know what I'm saying? Especially, like, you know, you got Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, you got Sean Payton, Drew Brees. Like, you know, the two the two offensive people that bounce ideas off each other. They've got the special notebook that they, you know, they got plays for days. Um, so he's just been learning the last couple of years. You saw Teddy Bridgewater get his, get his shot and shine last year. Then, of course, he departs and goes to Carolina. Now he's, you know, the face of Carolina um, and pick up Jameis. But it's like, you know, Taysom has been learning for the last two or three years under Drew and, you know, knows the system really well. So it, it, it sort of tilted his way, I guess, when the two chance became, and he took advantage of the opportunity. So when, I, when was it special? The moment he got there I, as a quarterback, the moment he got a shot, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, and finally, you're, uh, you're teaming up with the Crescent City Corps there in New Orleans, and uh, taking action, right? With all that's going on in the offseason, um, not everybody's kind of making something happen, and, and you're doing that right now with this. Will you tell us about what that is? Yeah, CCC, uh, Crescent City Corps, I mean, has has done a phenomenal job of setting this this program where um, it's it's not retraining, it's adding training to um, the police department of New Orleans, at least where we're going to start with about, you know, 80 something, 80 or something uh, officers in this, where it's integrating the community affairs, the community relations within the department of New Orleans. And it's, um, you know, especially in this social, this, this social climate that we've been in, uh, with COVID going on and everybody sort of focused being being shown and you know the focal point of how how much of a disparity of of treatment has been between our people in terms of a nation versus our our people where it's been divided by color um, and we're going through it we're facing George Floyd's the Breonna Taylors uh, we're looking at the Ayanna Stanley Jones we're we're seeing how 
this country has sort of been divided and yet we're always looking for a way to to build in our community. So this I, gave me the best opportunity to try and do just that. It was like using all these words, going to all these, you know, going to these peaceful protests, going to uh, learning as much as you can about how you can affect your community, how you can try and, and build up something. Um, I, I looked in and, and just looking for these different avenues. Cause it's one thing to say, just have words. It's another thing to have actions. And this sort of helped me line up the actions with trying to affect a positive change. Um, and doing so, uh, it, it sort of gives me at least a chance to see if this will actually create a positive step. And, you know, with this, I think there could be more positivity because we all know positivity begets positivity. I think it's awesome, man. Oh, he yeah. is a uh, five-time pro bowler, one of the top uh, players in the national football league. His team's 10 and two. I mean, just stacking up the sacks. Uh, and by the way, check out the Trust Levels podcast with Mark Inger. It's it's pretty cool to hear two active players having other active players who are of the <laughs> similar ilk. I mean, three great players just chopping it up uh, on a podcast. Trust Levels uh, with Cam and uh, and Mark. What is it? What is it? Which way is it? What is it? Big Trust. That's what I'm saying. Big Trust. Big no, Trust. Big trust. I got you. Levels. Right. I love it. I love it. Cam, thanks, man. Absolutely appreciate you guys having me on. It really is remarkable, MJD, when you think about all the guys that we have on. And at some f point in your life, you've had a connection with most of these guys. It's a small circle, man. It's it's so funny. The NFL, it's a, a very small circle. You, you, a lot of guys do a lot of different things. With uh, Cam, we just trained together his early in his career, uh, which was kind of on the back end of mine. Um, but a lot of guys work out in Miami, wherever they may go. And uh, you know, we just we just cross paths a couple times, and it's fun. It's like it's awesome when you see a guy, you know, a young guy, you kind of see, and it, it, he was like, you know, I was in those weight room hitting it because I also had to hit guys that were 40, 50 pounds more than me, and he was like, well, I needed more cardio, I right. needed to be more lean, and, and and which was, you know, he found out what worked best for him, which, you know, it takes a, a guys a lot of time to do. So it was nice to hear that. Cam Jordan, by the way. Um He's going to make over $100 million in his career. I said, man, that's not enough. That's not enough? He needs to make more. Okay. All right. See, that's why the player's mentality there. To me, $100 million, probably enough. Are you cool with that? I, you, I, I, what if you can make more? Would you want well, to make no, more? Of okay, course well, I'd want to make more. more. Um, you know what wait, wait, wait. Have you seen, you know, RIP to Mamba, but his his the Mamba mentality was what? More. Yeah. I get it. More. All right. Just want to make sure you were on the same page because when people need more of this. They do need more of this. Okay. You know what else I need more of? I'm going to need more of after the Saints whip up on the Eagles. I don't care who's a quarterback. I'm going to need more of that game against the Chiefs because oh. that could be a Super Bowl preview coming up here in a couple of weeks. Oh, well, this is the thing. And this is one of the things I wanted. I, we should have just dove into it, but I didn't want to put him on the spot because he is my dog. Um, do you go back to, to, to Drew Brees? Because last year you went back to Drew Brees after Teddy Bridgewater and you were one and done in the playoffs. Do you go back to him or you stick you with Taysom Hill? You have to go back to Drew Brees. Why? You You're winning to. without them. They're not, are they a better team without them, though? They are. I mean, they're rolling teams out right well, they're now. They're 8-0, by the way, with Teddy Bridgewater and Taysom Hill at quarterback filling in for Drew Brees the yeah. last two years. I, I, think, I don't think that makes them a better team. I just think in the circumstances they're in, Sean Payton it, has done a hell of a job It's as hard a when you have a running quarterback to stop teams, especially when you get in the playoffs and that guy has the ability to run. Taysom Hill, they were struggling. Tell that, that to like, Tennessee when they just bitch slap Lamar and the Ravens last year in the playoffs. They did. Yeah. But okay. I'm just but then, then the next week, what did Mahomes do? He rushed for two. So it's the same. I mean, as I mean you can I mean you can make the point that there's not a, as much film on him. So like maybe he could find a way to try there's, and manipulate a defense. No, but, there's gonna be film on him because he's gonna play what if he if he keeps playing, he'll be what, eight games in or Taysom? Oh, he's yeah, played three. He's played three. So would they have five more? No, we're going into week fourteen. Okay, they have four, so he played seven games. Yeah, That's right. enough film on someone. Okay. Really? Yeah, no question. All right. Um, here's where I want to get started. The NFC East, the division I grew up rooting for, suddenly interesting, MJD. Washington beats Pittsburgh. Right. The Giants beat Seattle. Mm -hmm. Both are five and seven. Giants hold the tiebreaker based on uh, they beating beat them Washington twice. twice, of yeah. course, right? But here's the remaining schedule for these guys. The Giants playing Arizona this week, and then they have Cleveland, Baltimore, Dallas. So you look at that, you're like, I, best you, case scenario, you're you, two and two. The worst case, you win one. Worst case. Washington, San Francisco, Seattle, Carolina, Philadelphia. Best case scenario, two and two. Two and two. Worst, Worst case. case, one and three. 
Yeah. Oh, and four, maybe. I don't think they lose to Philadelphia. I don't but think I, they lose to Philly either. But. So this is, it's, I'm fascinated by what has happened with these two teams. Listen, they beat Pittsburgh without recording a sack, Washington did. They yep. held them to just 21 yards rushing. They but, came back from 14 down well, that's in the thing. Pittsburgh. Well, this is the thing. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they have lost a lot. And a lot of people, I, I think Mike Tomlin was like, uh, TJ Watt doesn't need Bud Dupree, and that's right. He doesn't need him to be successful, but that team needs Bud Dupree to help stop in that run game and have pressure on that quarterback to, you know, and Alex Smith was sitting back there. And if you could slide coverage to one guy, that's kind of what's going to happen, um, or slide protection, I mean. So um, in this situation, you know, I look at Pittsburgh and I'm like, ah, the the Washington football team really realized that you don't have to get sex. And that's what teams fail to realize because they get the ball out so quick. Just rush and put your hands up. How many balls were batted down, right? That, Montez that last, Sweat was all over the place. Oh, he was unreal. And and another thing is this. The Washington football team has done a great job of adding depth to their defensive line with first-round picks. I mean, it seems like they have nothing but first-round picks, guys that rotate in and right. make plays and all these different Sweat, things. Jonathan Allen. Yeah, and, 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 and Ron Rivera, you know, I think he – you know, we would question his, him benching Dwayne Haskins early in the year. I was questioning because you've been for Kyle Allen. But now with Alex Smith in there, you can run this offense with J.D. McKissick and how you use him out of the backfield. Um, and remember, Antonio Gibson got hurt. Like They made a ton of adjustments in this game, and they attacked one of the top, if not the best defense in the National Football League with a running back out of the backfield. So can we now say that it is important to make sure to have a good quarterback and you need to pay that quarterback because of the difference oh, that a quarterback made from one this conversation. Team? By another, the way, I mean, it was walking into it. Not, not really. The, not, I didn't say that. What did I say? A pass-catching running back. That, okay. Oh, here we go. See, it's I always about running back. Sure, I just had to make sure, it. make sure if you're going to jump in, you listen to the we, whole thing, I baby. mean, you know. Hey, uh, I did not give Matthew Bubar the uh, the proper uh-huh. introduction. Well, well, that is quite all right. He's good. Yeah. No, I it's try. all good. I, I, I'm glad he we're jumped buddies. in. We I, I, I will say this with Alex Smith. Alex Smith has always been a winner because of one thing. Not because of making tremendous throws. Not because of any of these other things. He was a tremendous winner because... He doesn't turn the ball over. Smart guy. He's smart smart with the football. Yep. And if you have a great defense like the Washington football team does, congratulations, Dan. That front five. And you don't turn the ball over, names. all of a sudden, you can start winning games that, that you know, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, I want to say, they turned the ball over a couple times in that game. Um, Including in the end when that was a tip pass. A that tip was pass, the, right. That was the uh, Roethlisberger and pick to nail their it. their defense was on the field far too long. Well, here, here, to me, drops have been a huge problem. They have – a very talented receiving core. Young. They have 12 drops in the last two games. As good as Deontay Johnson is, he leads the NFL in drops. Well, right well I was going to say, like, him and Ebron. Ebron does it, too. Like, he he has a timely had a drop. It's like, bad ones. third and six, and he's, like, wide open. Boop. And I'm just like, uh, oh, no. But uh, Mike Tom, I was just reading something on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Mike Tom was like, look, either you can catch the ball or we'll find someone who can catch the ball. It's it, that simple. That is correct. The, the, actual, the exact quote was, they can catch the ball or they can get replaced by those that will catch it. <laughs> I expect guys to make routine plays routinely. Why yeah. Why is it that I enjoy listening to Mike Tomlin oh, speak Oh, dude, he's so awesome. I, I, I've, I've interacted with him a ton. When I was a free agent, I went to Pittsburgh, almost uh, signed there, actually, and we had a conversation. He's so he's so true and real is what you want. Um, but that team, I mean, they have a standard there. And they, like he says, the standard is always going to be the standard, no matter who's playing. Um, and he's right. Like, that, those young receivers, those drops hurt them. Yeah, no, it was it was brutal, and and Washington made him pay. I I must admit, I was surprised by the outcome of that. I thought that uh, Pittsburgh, when they were up by fourteen, would would put the nail in the coffin there for Washington, not able to do it. Hey Dan, we, yeah, go real ahead. Real quick, I just wanted to drop something to the fans real fast. You know, Washington was four and seven entering the game, and Pittsburgh was eleven and zero. Washington's four and seven record was the worst by any team in NFL history to defeat a team that entered that game with an eleven and zero record or better. Is that uh, right? That is 100% fact. Upset of the upset of the century. Yep. Of the history. So so giving credit, like you guys said, giving credit wow. to to Washington. How does that make they, you feel? They're looking good. But well, I I mean I grew up a Washington fan. That's what I'm saying. How does yeah. that make you feel? Yeah. You guys, I'm, I'm you happy guys for him. You know okay. I'm happy for probably more than they're, they're two guys. I've told you this before. Ron Rivera's story no dealing awesome. with cancer and Alex Smith going through what he's gone through with no that doubt. leg yeah. and the fact that he's on like the eighth iteration of that brace that he has to wear because of drop foot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a miracle. Then he's he a got football his, then he miracle. Then he got his leg cut wide open. He was gushing blood out there. He's uh, a warrior yeah. though. It's uh, a warrior. 
So everybody's rooting for Washington, I think, just because of the storylines there uh, from from a human perspective. The Giants have now won four in a row. It's their longest winning streak since 2016. I'm going to tell you this. When the Rams played the Giants, I want to say in week two or three, maybe four, I said, oh, no. They're they're good. That defense is real. They can play. Um, and they find ways to get to the quarterback. They do a lot of good things. Their issue was Daniel Jones just turned the ball over every week. Like, and I think Jabril Pepper said it best. They they just weren't they weren't getting their ass whooped when they were losing games. That's not, those are his exact quotes. That's why I put it out there. But they were in games, and that they just had to turn some things around to go to Seattle and do to Russell Wilson what they did. Right. That breeds confidence. It's hard to play in Seattle. I don't care what anyone says. It's hard to play in the North. Fans or no fans, it's hard. Yeah, it's yeah. just tough. It's just it's a hard travel. It's just different. Um, but for them to go out there and play the way they played, and then I have to ask: Is like, is there a quarterback question there? Because Colt McCoy goes in and wins a game, right, against a Seattle Seahawks team that has been playing lights out. We saw what they did to the Philadelphia Eagles uh, on Monday night. I mean, you sh- you really. Put the clamps on DK Metcalf. You don't allow him to go crazy. Or Tyler Lockett. They couldn't run the ball, and you were sacking Russell Wilson. It, it, this is going to be it, it, like you said. The, the title of this is the NFC East is uh, suddenly become interesting. And you're exactly right. It's a two team race, but who's going to win it? And, and I think at the end of the day, that's that's going to be you know maybe the two games of the Giants beating the uh, football team. That could be the difference because be they the hold difference. the tiebreaker yeah. here. Uh, quarterback situation in Philly. Is that's it all really? They, that's all they talked about. It's not a quarterback situation. Well, you just Philly. go to Jalen Hurts. Yeah, you, you, look. No question. The, you you got to give him a shot. What you, do you have to lose at this th- point? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, at the end of the day, Carson Wentz is going to be here, right? He right. knows he's not playing well. We need to get a whole offseason. We got to get him recalibrated, get him fixed. Uh, and I'm not going to keep putting him out there getting the scrutiny from – you know, other people now, the, the 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 flip side of that is that Jalen Hurts plays so well that all of a sudden Carson Wentz becomes a backup for a while and for two years, and then he goes somewhere else. But well, you're already giving him the backup role for two years. You're just awarding the, the – I'm just saying if Jalen plays well. If Jalen if Jalen Hurts goes out there and plays well and they start winning and all of a sudden they get back in this thing, that's going to be an issue. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a big issue. If the Eagles – and I, we just had Cam uh, Cameron Jordan on. If the Eagles beat the Saints, that's going to be a problem. They're not going to beat. The I'm Saints. not saying they are, but if they do, that is going to be a problem. And you know what happens when you when like a guy wins a big one? It's like, oh, we got in a situation. But well, they know in Philly on, all too well. But that's on Carson Wentz because you had so much time to play well. You're missing routine. Like people do XOs, Kurt Warner, Mike Robb, uh, Daniel Jeremiah at the NFL Network, and I I see this stuff just watching the game. But in the way they're breaking it down, it's like he's missing simple reads. Guys yeah. are running wide open. And he's just like, I don't even want to throw them the ball. He is the most inaccurate quarterback in football this year. And it's rather inexplicable. Yes, they've had a ton of injury problems on the offensive line. Yes, the wide receiving core was decimated earlier in the year. But those pieces are slowly but surely starting to come back. He was without Miles Sanders for some right. time. And he's still not hitting the passes that he's supposed to hit. I, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination, Carson Wentz is dumb. But I do agree with you. I, I think he had, hand the reins over to Jalen Hurts for a while, if not the rest of the season, and, and just see how it goes. Um, I, I want to ask you about the Browns. Okay, we can do uh, that. Yeah, let's talk about those Brownies. Because it we is, can do that. I think it's good for football when Cleveland has a good football team. And it has been so, mm. so long. And they're not, you're not going to put them in those franchises. I'm not going to let you do that. Because there's there's certain franchises. I'm not saying they're there's the certain Steelers franchises or yeah, they're the, the Raiders, Cowboys or they're the Cow- You can't do that. The, the Ravens have eclipsed them. The team that that right. used to be right. Them. Uh, they they are to me. They might be the the most top to bottom, the most professional, the most uh, solid Who, organization. The yeah, in football, yeah. I, I I love the way that the yeah. Ravens operate. Um, so I'm not saying the Browns are there, but I just think Cleveland is a football city, and I think it's good for the NFL. When Cleveland has a good football team in that part of the country, what you need the Bengals or the Browns to be good. Well, so I, this is this is what I will say. I think Cleveland is a sports town. I think it it's it's yearning for another winner after LeBron left the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think the Indians when they played in the World Championship and they lost to the the Cubs, that was the, like you saw Cleveland rock right like the whole like Cleveland rocks right. That, it's a great that sports is, town. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think when you talk about the Browns, they passed one test last week. The one test was, can you beat an opponent that is built very similar to you, that pretty much is a mirror of you, right? Quarterback needs to be efficient. You have a great running game. Defense is opportunistic. They did that. That's awesome. 
But if you want to take the next jump and you're the Cleveland Browns, you have to go back and get revenge. And it's best served cold with crab cakes, if you know what I'm talking <laughs> on about. On Monday night. On Monday night, because yeah. the Ravens got after him. I want to say it was week one. They got after him pretty good. It was week one. Yeah, and so you want to make sure that you get this division back. You take the Ravens first, and then you have to come back and get you some of the Pittsburgh Steelers who got after you as well. So if they can win those two games, then I'll say, you know what? I'm buying stock in the Cleveland Browns. But until then, you have to win both of you them. You have to win both of them. You got to split. You got to like that is when you become the Cleveland Browns. That's when this um the whole aura or all the stuff that we've been taught like oh they haven't been to the playoffs since 2002 and all these different things. That is when they they you start getting on that trajectory and, and I I I love that Kevin Stefanski's brought in a system that fits what they're trying to do. Went and got offensive linemen. It's exactly perfect. Two it's runners. Just- receivers that are making plays. And remember, they don't have Odell Beckham either, nope. which is crazy. So they got a lot of stuff that they can do to get going. Um, I just – they have to win those two games, I think, in order for me the, to buy stock. In the them. Titans are the first good team they've, they've beaten be, this year. Yeah. Um, but they're also a good team that doesn't have a really good defense. Their defense right. is, hasn't been great this year, so they still haven't beaten – a team with an elite defense. Well, I mean, they just put Clowney on IR, and they, they got a lot of stuff. Well, they, going they, on. they get no they get no pressure off the no. edge. You remember Vic Beasley and, and Jadavion Clowney were the two guys that they spent a lot of money on yeah. to bring in and to provide them some pass rush help, and they Jadavion, got zero sacks out of both. Jadavion of Jadavion Clowney doesn't rush the passer. He's a pressure guy, and he's he's uh, uh, they he's were good with that. The they knew what they were getting. I mean, right. the Vrabel coached them in Houston. Yeah. They knew what they get. They didn't Beasley, have much going again, on. There. Wasn't he wasn't a sack. He had the one year we had sixteen sacks, and that was. There were 16 and a half sacks, and that was it. Uh, but he he's very talented. It just some reason it hasn't clicked for him. So Baker, I, okay. So you you're still not buying stock in Cleveland yet. It's more you're in a holding pattern right yeah. now. It's not buy. It's not sell. You're holding this stock. But what about Baker? So let me let me give you this one stat because this was the popular storyline around the NFL when you listen to any of the pundits. Oh, the Browns are hiding Baker. They want to hide Baker. They're going to run the football. They're not going to let him do anything. Well, since throwing an interception on the first drive against Cincinnati week seven, Baker has thrown 11 touchdowns and zero picks with yeah, no Yeah, but that, that's, 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 it's not, see, that, that those, you those don't numbers, love just the those numbers stats. lie. I'm going to tell okay. you why. Because look, at, give me the defenses that they faced. In those in those in those games since then. All right. Pulling right. Them up. Yeah. It wasn't the Pittsburgh Steelers, I can tell you that much. Cause I know he was throwing pick sixes in that one. So uh, go ahead. Raiders. The, all right. And that was a, a weird game, but that was that awful weather, weather game. game. That yep. was a weather weather game. Houston. Okay. And they won that one ten to seven. Exactly. Eagles. Yeah. Your Jags. Yep. So they really haven't played a top defense. No, they, they so all those like, defenses have been in the bottom half. Yeah, of the so NFL. I don't want to like that. Doesn't again. You're going to play the number one defense on Monday night. I need to see that. Then you're going to play the the, the Giants. Giants we just talked about good, right are good. Then you right. get the Jets, and then you got to play the Steelers. Like you have to, you have to. You're going to go through a, a tough defense here. Three of the next four games are going to be top defenses in this league. How does he perform then? Here's the reality. The reality is that even if they stink up the joint from here on out, it's going to be a 10-win season in Cleveland. Yeah. Should be. It's pretty good. You know who was last, the last, last quarterback to have a 10-win season there? For, for the Browns? Yeah. Yeah, Derek Anderson. Exactly. Yeah. 2006. DA. Say it again. DA, Oregon okay. State. Oregon Pac-12. State. I'm just saying. Pac- and they, didn't, Pac- ma- and they didn't make the playoffs that year. He was a Pac- that dimer back they didn't, then. They didn't, no, they didn't make didn't. the playoffs that year. They won 10 games, didn't make the playoffs. Exactly. So yep. I don't. all that don't matter. Make these offs. Uh Patriots. Oh my goodness, they're back. The, the Patriots the, could make the, the playoffs. The evil empire is back. What, what are we doing? They are six and six after winning four of their last fly, five, including wins over the Ravens and the Cardinals. They truck the Chargers last. Oh. I mean, this was embarrassing. Listen, Anthony Lynn, easy guy to root for. Not going to be there next year, but they're not going to make the move in season. Sounds like yeah. they're going to wait until yeah. until the offseason. That that's just bad. It's out of, but that, that's, that's bad. That's, I mean, forty five nothing's bad. Your your quarterback played like a rookie. We knew that was going to happen. Well, at he some was going to come down. He was, he's going to play like a rookie at yeah, some point, and he did. And then the defense had really wasn't even defense. It was special teams, which is, and that's the one thing I always tell people when you play the New England Patriots, it's not the fact that you have to be perfect. Is that special teams, you have to win that. When the Baltimore, when teams beat the New England Patriots, when they were in their heyday, it was because they had a really good special teams. Right. The Baltimore Ravens, when they went up there and they beat them, they played all, they had a good defense, their offense was solid, but their special teams was lights out. Um, and so if you're going to beat the Patriots, 
Your special teams has to be because that's where they get that's where they make their money. You had a block field goal for a touchdown, a punt return, return for a touchdown, touchdown, and another one, another sixty yard return. Like you can't have that when you're going against them, and that is what concerns me in the next game. It was the Gunnar Olszewski game. Yeah, right. You, that that concerns me with the next game when you talk about uh, them playing the Rams. The Rams special teams is struggling. I know, I know. That's and one that of my is, one of my I, points I've highlighted in I, our game. And I'm picks, like, my yo, like I don't know. I, I don't like. That is a challenging one, and so I'm gonna have to talk about that this week. But it's it's crazy, man. It's it's one of those things where, you know, they're running they're a downhill running team. They don't throw the ball that much. They play great defense and great special teams. And we're gonna shorten the game. And they scored 45 points, and that is scary. You know, Anthony Lynn uh, after the game at his presser, he did take full responsibility as he should, as he should, and he said it was it was. Completely embarrassing. He will personally make sure that that will never happen again. He also went on to say that it was the worst football game that he's ever been a part of as a coach or player and ended by saying it's not acceptable. Yeah, that that sounds good. Yep. But he can't cross those lines. Nope. So he can't. He's not going to determine. Like, that's he's the worst thing about being a running. coach. That's why I stopped coaching. You know that? That's one of the reasons I stopped coaching. Pop Warner? Yeah, you can't control it. You can do everything you can as a coach. You can get the guys prepared. You can yeah. rep the plays. But it's the people that cross those lines that have but to do it. When you're coaching the kids, man, it's just about watching them develop. Oh, no, yeah, that's, that's fun. But, that, but then you got parents. That, 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 that I'm just saying, like, the reason I didn't go into, like, pro and college oh, coaching right, right. is because you can't control that. Like, you can have them fully prepared, and they go out there and lay an egg. And guess what? They don't take the blame for it. The head coach has to take the blame for it. You have to be, you know, Anthony Linden – throw those interceptions nope. or give up those punt returns. He didn't and, get that kick blocked. No, he didn't do none of that. No. Like, But no, you know what? But he did manage the clock very poorly two Ooh. weeks ago. Ooh, yeah. Ooh that, that was happens. bad. That happens. Time for a quick timeout to tell you about a few of our sponsors. And we start with Greens Plus, a health food leader since 1989, known for creating the first ever blended green superfood powder and the first company to infuse that green superfood into a bar. The bars, powders, Tastes great. The most effective way to improve your immunity, detox your body, boost your energy, and get that nutritional insurance that your body deserves. All organic, gluten-free, available at Whole Foods, Amazon, or greensplus.com. I recommend going to greensplus.com because you get 20% off if you use the promo code HELI. You like smoothies? Throw some wild berry superfood powder in there. Greens Plus. At VACO, the motto is we invest in your career, so you are here for the duration of ours. VACO, a premier talent and solutions firm that provides boutique level service with global reach in the areas of consulting, consultative project resources, executive search, permanent placement, and strategic staffing. You need somebody to fill that C-suite position. VACO has you covered. Their areas of expertise all across the board, folks. Accounting, finance, tech, healthcare IT, ops, administration, or international managed services. They were founded in 2002. One of the founding partners, my good buddy Brian Waller, a University of Tennessee alum. He did not like how things went this past weekend against Georgia. I can tell you that much. But Vaco's still growing. They serve over 40 markets across the globe. 1,000 employees, 5,000 consultants, and $750 million in revenue. At Vaco, they're doing it right. Check them out, Vaco.com. That's V A C O.com for more info on how they can connect people to their dream jobs and help leading companies find talent to grow their business. I'm not sure how long it's been. I think probably three months or so, but I tried this new product called True Niagen, and I think you should too. There is a trend. MJD in the scientific community uh, that surrounds the health of our cells. It affects all of us from former athletes like you to the weekend warriors like myself. We have something in our cells called NAD, which supports our energy and our body's ability to repair itself all the way down to the cellular level. Well, it turns out that NAD declines as we age. It also declines when we overexercise or we don't sleep enough and even when we're exposed to a virus. There is only one NAD booster that is backed by Nobel Prize winning scientists, 10 published human studies and regulatory approvals for safety. And that is True Niagen. Visit TrueNiagen.com to learn more. That's T-R-U-N-I-A-G-E-N. I haven't been sick in... Three months since I've taken this stuff. It's good. Um, all right. Well, let's get into our game picks now because this kind of flows nicely off of it. Um, 
Before we get going with the uh, Patriots and the Rams, Bubar, would you like to share with us where we are in you terms know, of season-long I would, records? And I know that you'd like to hear this even more because after our Week 13 picks, our own MJD unfortunately went three and four. He put hey. together a losing record for this week, which put him on the year at 46 and 32. Respectable. No problem. Respectable. No doubt. I think he's had a couple of losing weeks. It's Our, embarrassing for a man of the, your status to have two host, losing weeks. Uh, the host of the Helipod, the co host. Dan Heli, the co host, went four and three. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Make sure you say it right. The co host. Don't, don't, don't you dare. One, the, the main co host. The cone host. The co host. The man who asked me to be a part of this <laughs> great right. podcast. Yeah, but he's the co host. He. The man went four and three, Listen. and now has a forty-seven and thirty-one record so on the year, which lead, means he has saying. a you don't one me, You don't talk to me like that lead. until you catch up with me. Oh, well, here we go. Yeah, this is the win, week. Win, this is I told talk. you. I told you this is the thing. Like it's either it would be fun for me to win all the time, but it's, it doesn't. The banter does. It's not good. So I need to let you get a lead. Let you get out there a little bit. It's kind of like the tortoise and the hare. When it said <laughs> the right? hare over here right. is not going to go eat a go watch a movie and eat popcorn and go to sleep. I'm just gonna just run right past. I like how the whole. I like the whole idea was to just to just get more listeners so that we can make this. That's right. Make it has this to be. I like when he here. lays the gauntlet down. Oh, yeah. Because this is it's getting real now. Uh, here we go. Week fourteen. All right. All right uh, we got six of them for you this week, as per usual. Patriots six and six at the Rams eight and four. This is the Thursday night football game. It's the rematch of the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Patriots staying in L.A. this week. Are they working out at UCLA? They are. They're staying at the hotel uh, at UCLA, With working w? out there. Yeah. No, not the W, the one on campus. Uh -huh. And they literally just walk right to the facility, uh, the UCLA facility, which is pretty dope. How great is that? Yeah, the, uh, you know, my dog, Matthew Slater, who we may be able to get on this podcast. Yeah, He's played a long time, Bruce. special teams guy. Mm -hmm. He'll be a Hall of Famer. Um, he, uh, you know, he, he sent a couple texts to me like, hey, man, I'm at the U. I was like, well, good. Hopefully some of that, that success from the Patriots rubs off on us. You know what I mean? No, it's cool. The uh, The Patriots have been here for a week, and I think they already have one more win in L.A. than UCLA does this season. Is that, is that right? No, that's not true. I we, just made that up. Winning. You, you okay. don't do that. You won games? It's yeah, very believable, though. Five, I don't know what I'm talking about. about. That's a complete, that's a I'm glad you brought that up oh, while we're doing this, because guess who UCLA plays this week? Mm. USC. Is this, U this, is, mm. this is USC is UCLA week? week? Someone may be wearing some Bruin stuff around here. I got to go scrum it up out of the you know my my closet, see if I got some stuff. Matt Bubar is a uh, is a Trojan. And we have uh, only can, a Bruin you know, legend over here, too. They're only good once. All right, let's get back to let's get back to the <laughs> Patriots-Rams game. Um, New England is going to try and run the ball, obviously. They had 165 yards against the Chargers. The Rams are a top three run D, so it's not going to be easy. And uh, the Patriots' defense, last couple of games, they've been good. They have a yeah. lot less than 300 total yards. Um, I... I'm just buying the Rams. When they're not playing San Francisco, they're a really good football team. The yeah. offense, too deep, too balanced. I don't think New England's going to – they'll be able to slow them down. They're not going to be able to stop them. And I'm curious to get your take on this since you do their games. I feel like Cam Akers is finally developing into that, that yeah. number one running back that he was expected to be. Yeah, yeah. It took Cam a little bit of time, but they he's finally kind of clicking there. My These are my concerns. And um, this is just my me being an analyst and not a Ramley member. Um Sean McVay, they struggle against Belichick t teams. Talk, go back to the Super Bowl. You go back to Matt Patricia when he was with the Lions. They went down to the wire with them. Uh, the Miami Dolphins this year, uh, Jerry Goff had probably his worst game ever in that game. Um, and so that, that concerns me defensively. Now your defense is lights out, but you can't turn the ball over on offense. And the Patriots, they get turnovers defensively. Um, and then the other thing is this. The Rams defense, the last time they, they the defense didn't play well was against the Niners. That's and, my, my uh, bad, buddy. Yeah, against Kept the Niners. Back, and um, what happened was the Niners just beat them up physically running the ball downhill that first game in San Fran. So I'm a little concerned with the game. Uh, I, I don't like the matchup per se for the Rams like I did last week against the Cardinals. Um, but I think the Rams, hopefully the Rams, you know, understand the challenge that comes that, that that's ahead of them and they, they do their stuff. So I'm going to take the Rams in this one because I always take the Rams. It don't matter who they play. I'm a Ramley member and that's how it goes down. That's funny. A couple of weeks ago, you said you didn't always do that. It's not, it's funny how you just change no, your tune that. depending on the day. I always take the Rams. Yeah. Stop it. Um, all right. Vikings, 
six. Who are you six. taking? Oh, I didn't give my pick yet. Yeah, I'm going Rams too. Okay, I already good. said I, I didn't right. think that uh, good. they could they could slow them down. They couldn't stop them. I'm going 34-28. I think there will be points scored in this one. Okay. Uh, Vikings six and six at the Bucks seven and five. Tampa coming off that bye week. There's a sense of urgency there now. It has to be. And they have a relatively easy schedule uh, the rest of the way. But I, I feel like that run defense for Tampa, which is very very good. Um, it's the top run defense in the NFL. It's going to slow Dalvin down. I think they're going to put plenty of pressure on Cousins. Brady's going to clean up the turnovers at home. Uh, they're I mean, they, they're, yeah. they're going to win this one. I don't think it's going to be close. Not the, a blowout, but not yeah, really. Yeah, the Vikings that close. defense isn't. You know, they gave up a lot of points. So um, I, I got the Bucks winning this one too. Okay, I'm going 24-17 uh, in that game. We're both picking the Bucks. Cardinals struggling six and six now at the Giants five and seven Giants rolling they've won four in a row cards in trouble man Kyler's still hurting and how about this stat this was an original helipod nugget besides the Jets game the Cardinals haven't won a game this year when Kyler hasn't rushed for more than 60 yards and he hasn't been close to that last so you know that I got a lot of hate from a lot of people on Twitter because I said I'd rather have Matt Ryan than Kyler Murray and people were like, you're crazy, blah, blah. I'm like, to win consistently in this league, you have to be able to throw from the pocket. Kyler, he struggles with it right now. And it's going to take well, time. Well, he's struggling with it right now because of the shoulder injury. But I, 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 he struggled with it before the shoulder injury. He was their, He's their leading rusher. He's their leading, like, his his ability to run and scramble is what makes his offense so scary. It's Agreed. not the fact yes. that he can sit there and dice you from the pocket. That is going to be a concern because what you said, when you run a lot, you start to get hit. You start to get nicked up. He's not a big guy. He's he's a he's a very uh, felt guy, I guess. And so hopefully that you know he can you know fix this up and, and clean it up. But that's going to be a big issue for them if he can't run because that that is their rushing game. That is their all that stuff he can't do. And when he played the Rams, they they didn't they stopped all of it. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. But with all that being said, with if Daniel Jones is back, I'm gonna take the Cardinals because I don't. Uh, I, if Daniel Jones, he's going to turn that ball over, man. And that's the one thing that you, even if you have a good defense, turnovers are going to hit you, hurt you. I'm going to take the Cardinals. So that's going to be our one, one of our, our, our oh, flip flops. Oh, yes. By the way, uh, let me give a little heads up for um, uh, ESPN NFL matchup executive producer Greg Cosell. I was listening to him uh, talking about uh, the matchup uh, beforehand. He actually said that he thought, and this was a review of it, he actually thought that Belichick noticed on tape that when Kyler rolls out, if he's not looking upfield trying to break forward and he's just running horizontally out of the pocket, he rarely tucks that ball and turns upfield. He either throws it away or runs out of bounds horizontally. And he said that he thought Belichick might have picked that up in game study. And he thought that that would have been a nice way to stop Kyler from trying to get that running lane outside. And it was very interesting hearing that because it wasn't something that you heard a lot about coming into the game about Kyler. We were just enamored with his play, how he ran. I mean, fantasy wise, possible MVP talk. And to hear that, it was very striking because you just don't assume that that's how he runs his game. And it was really, really interesting. And so to your point, uh, he might be protecting that shoulder. He might just be doing something a little different. I, I think I, for me, I, I believe this. The Kyler Murray is... Um it sucks for him that he's in the same division as Russell Wilson. So teams can just have the same game plan for both guys, right? If you played Russell Wilson, you know, early in his career, he was a scrambling kind of guy, right. get out of the pocket, down. Like, so you you developed a defense to keep him in the pocket. So that's literally what the Rams did. Uh, there was a play where Justin Hollins, uh, one of the Rams reserve outside linebackers, was rushing, and he saw Kyler Murray ready to scramble. Instead of going at him, he took off to the sideline to make him pull up, and then the, 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 the pressure got to him. That is how you 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 go after these running quarterbacks. If you watch the New England Patriots, you contain. they weren't blitzing to get to him. They were blitzing to contain him. Right. Just and running so, up the field. Yeah, running, just making sure he stayed in the pocket. And so again, that is those are going to be concerns. I just think, you know, the the Giants, it's less about the Giants defense and more about their offense. If if your man Daniel Jones is back, he's gonna start turning the ball over again. And if you do that, you give Kyler too many opportunities, they will connect on a couple plays. You plus. hate you, man, Daniel Jones. I see he's a turnover machine. Those quarterbacks in the Jets, the, the Jets and the Giants have turnover machines at quarterback. I'm going to be watching this one with a big smile on my face when the Giants pull out the win 27-23. Okay. Chiefs at the Dolphins. Uh, <sighs> Chiefs 11-1, Dolphins 8-4. and four. Fins are good, man. They are. They're second in the NFL creating turnovers. Uh, and they might get a couple against Kansas City. Unfortunately, they might also give a couple 
Um, I don't I don't think Tua in this offense can just keep up in terms of the pace, the breakneck speed of this Chiefs well, offense. I, I think it's more of the Dolphins defense. They just play man to man. Right. They're gonna play press man around the board. And that's what the we saw the Tampa Bay Buccaneers try that against this Chiefs uh offense. It don't work. So uh it's gonna be interesting to see what they try to do. They're gonna try to create pressure with their blitzes, but Patrick Mahomes can recognize those things. Right. So it is gonna be on Tua to try to keep up. I don't know if he can do it. Uh, I don't know if their offensive line is ready for that Chiefs defensive line. Chris Jones and Frank Clark, they, you know, Frank Clark is not really getting the sacks like he did last year, but Chris Jones is get creating the pressures and it's allowing other guys to get going. Um, and then Tyron Matthew is just ball hawking right now. I mean, he's finding ways to, to get turnovers. So uh, to me, you know, I'm always going to go with Patrick, my homeboy. That's my other team. I thought that's my new team, right? Hmm. I, I, I'm at the Chiefs all day. I think, I think we're going, we're going to do some great things. So, um, You've been saying that forever. I yeah, don't think I that's a big Chiefs, surprise. Yeah, I I love using, who doesn't, by the way? You start using the line from Fresh Prince and just start going, Mahomes, see you, smell you later. Hey, <laughs> this is my homeboy. Patrick, he's my home home. I, I love that he's the face of the NFL. I mean, I do. I, I, you're, you're un-American if you don't like Patrick yep. Mahomes. Dude's so likable. All right, Colts, Raiders. Colts 8-4, and four, Raiders 7. This is a huge game in terms of playoff implications. Oh, yes. Right now, the Colts are in that last wild card spot. The Raiders right behind it. But the Colts could be – there's going to be a very good team That's in the not AFC make that doesn't make the playoffs. Yeah. And, and it could be the Colts. Yeah. It, it Maybe the Raiders. I think the Colts um, are a better team right now. The Raiders escaped with that win last week thanks to three people. Derek Carr – Henry Ruggs. This is what people have to realize, and Greg too. Greg Williams. No, people what, have to realize this. Derek Carr is a very good quarterback. Of course he very is. Very good quarterback. Good enough to recognize the blitz that was coming and check the protection. If he doesn't check that protection, he gets hit in the mouth. Right? And there's a lot of quarterbacks that don't realize that and don't do that. So give kudos to Derek Carr are making a, a lot check. Of, are there a lot of good quarterbacks that have been in the league for five-plus years that don't recognize the zero freaking blitz coverage? And, yes. Really? Yes. A lot of quarterbacks don't recognize blitz. Another example, if you don't see it and you don't change the protection, you get hit in the mouth. Derek Carr saw it, had Darren Waller chip and help, and then he was able to do a double move on the outside to Henry Ruggs. But it, like Greg Williams called what he called, horrible call. But if Derek Carr doesn't check check uh, check that protection. Could have worked. It worked early in the game, actually. It did. He was yeah. getting sacks with it early yeah. in the game. So why? Like, people are upset with him. It was just a great uh, adjustment by Derek Carr. And so even with all that being said, the Raiders are just too banged up. I mean, they got too much going on. Trent Brown, you know, he's dealing with his situation. And I, I think the Colts with getting DeForest Buckner back, my God. Yeah. That is going to be. Massive. That, that is huge for that defense. Uh, hopefully the, the Raiders get um, Josh Jacobs back. But if not, and it's not a lock. They don't. They, they don't know. They ho- yeah. they're hoping so, but they don't know. And, and Abrams is out. Yeah, like their the back defense is in is, trouble. Yeah, so they got they got a lot going on. And I, again, I, and I think it's people you have on here. T. Y. Hilton. He just plays well against the the, the Texans. He does. That's he not, is it's a not, Texans killer. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a. I think this is more about their running game and the, and the Himes out of the backfield, which is going to be huge for the Colts. This is uh, supposed to be one of the highest scoring games of the weekend, and I, and I think it will be. I, I have Indy 36-31 winning in Vegas. And so you're taking Indy too? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Steelers, Bills, Sunday night football. Listen, not only are the Steelers coming off that loss in which they blew a 14-point lead Crazy, to right? an inferior Washington team, um, but they didn't play well against Baltimore's JV team the game before that. And yeah. I mentioned this earlier, 12 drops in the, in the two games combined by a pretty competent receiving core. On the ground, not having James Conner has killed them. 2.6 yards per carry in the last two games. I. I really, I'm fighting after watching the Bills last night just friggin' torch San Francisco. I was, I was just gonna pick the opposite team in this one because that's I'm, how that's how fifty fifty is for I'm, me. I'm fifty fifty two. I'm I'm really fighting kind of the recency bias after right. seeing Josh Allen do what he did. I'm going with the Steelers. So I'll go with the Bills. That's it. You're just I, gonna go opposite. Oh, I told you. Either way, like I, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are a really good football team, and I told people this. I thought that they'd go undefeated this season. Um, but as of late, the loss Hold on, of Bud, you told people they'd go undefeated starting when? When like um, when they were eleven and zero? You said no, that? no. I said this when they were eight and zero. When they were eight and zero, and I was looking at their schedule, like you know, I didn't think the Washington football team would beat them the way well, they did. I don't did, think but, anybody did. But this other thing, the loss of Bud Dupree hurts their defense more than what they're saying. Well, it's like what Cam was saying, right? With Trey Hendrickson, he said, 
Trey's able to do what he does because I get double teamed and vice versa. Right. That, but that doesn't happen in Pittsburgh anymore. No, because now Bud Dupree's going, you need Cam Hayward to start getting pressure. Like everyone was good because everyone was focusing on TJ Watt. And then Bud Dupree was just whooping people. I mean, he was playing lights out, right? Um, playing at an all pro level, to be honest with everyone. Um, with his injury um, and what happened to him, now all of a sudden this this new kid's in there. He he's kind of he doesn't know what he's doing. He's playing well, but he still doesn't understand what they're doing. And they're giving up a ton of plays uh, in the passing game. If you look at what the Bills did, the Bills are going to come out five wide. They're not even going to try to run the ball. They're going to try. But they're like, ah, you know what? We'll just let Josh Allen five wides, big guys apart. And Stephon Diggs again shows who we had on this podcast that he is probably the most the 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 elite of elite route runners. I mean, that route he ran on uh, Verrett when he ran the slant and whipped back out and Verrett almost oh, blew yeah. everything. Like, you don't do those. Like, that is – and he beats everybody like that. So, um, they just – they're just finding their way. And then Cole Beasley. God, dog. Cole Beasley's he's balling. Great. Like he's he's he's, his, he's found his spot. Yeah. He's good to go. To get to go back on your point about that Steelers too, you know, losing uh, Devin Bush. Yeah, and then you just had Spillane get hurt in the game. He hurt his knee as well. Yeah, so I mean, you're you're down to the third string there. They're starting to get a little thinner at spots. Right. To your point that they were relying on heavily. No question. As the season went on, it'll be. We'll see how good Tomlin and that coaching staff is to keep up this level of play without those guys in. Yeah. By the way, this isn't remarkable slate of games this week. Oh my there God. are a awesome. ton of oh. great games. I'm not even going to pick the Ravens at the Browns because... I will. I will. You want to pick that? I was going to pick the Ravens. I'm going to pick the Ravens too. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, then, go, then I don't want to no, pick it no, then. No, no, no faith in my Browns, huh? That was, kind of the, that was kind of the bonus game, but they're, I mean, they're playing... The Ravens are playing tonight, so um, I didn't... You know, I wanted to see that. I like to see what's happened at, you know lately before I make a pick like But that. they're playing the Cowboys, man. If they don't... If, this is the thing. There's certain teams... America, Tennessee, L.A., the Bay Area. Those are kind of our big, our big areas, right? Did yeah. You watch this. Yeah. A little DC. DC. We got some DC, DC in there. Um, you have to beat the teams. Like I, I remember in high school, we would play teams, and like our coach, our coach would never say like we need to beat a team by X amount. He just said we need to play well, right? Um, but in our minds, we knew if we didn't score forty points, then we didn't have a good game. Because you didn't do your job, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Right. I remember, and I'm gonna give you a specific story. We we're playing the the University of Rice uh, my last year at UCLA. I think it's Rice University, or whatever it is. Rice Be, University. I University. show some respect, but, that, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. Um, I go out there and I say, look, if we don't put up as an offense, if we don't put up 50 points in this game, it's a problem. Then we didn't do our job, and I got a little rain for it because you know that's something you say inside the in your in your room. You don't talk about that right. to the media, but it was true, like. We matched up very well against what they were doing, and we ended up scoring 63 points. So we played a really good game. For the Baltimore Ravens, you have to dominate the Cowboys in every facet. You can't allow Zeke to run. You have to find turnovers. You got to play off. You have to do your job. And if you play well, that may be the, the game that springboards you into playing where you need to go. Well, Baltimore has been uh, somewhat disappointing thus far. So uh, let's, let's see if they can get it together down the stretch. I mean, they could still... I mean, easily get to to ten wins, but you know they they could be an eleven win team this year. They too. could be too. Um, MJD Matthew Bubar, another great uh, episode. Awesome. Had a lot of fun with uh, Cam Jordan today. He's Looking forward to uh, getting this one put together by our editor and photographer Brian Roven Para. As always, yeah, thank you uh, for helping us. Yeah. B Dog, and we'll see you here next week. Everybody enjoy what is a great week of football.